Welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures on Comlex and USMLE board preparation, as well as a daily blog that will give you updates as you prepare through medical school. Let's review hypercalcemia. This diagram is showing you how sunlight, diet, and um, over-the-counter drugs, as well as vitamins, all can lead to vitamin D3 in your body. This in turn is converted into vitamin D25-hydroxylase, which um, in the liver gets processed to 25-OHD3. That is converted into 25-OHD1-hydroxylase. And once it's converted to that form, in the kidney, it can either be processed and it goes to the intestine, um, or it can go to the bone as 1,25-OH2-D3. In addition, the parathyroid gland can secrete PTH, um, and the PTH can in turn affect the bone, the kidney, and affect the regulation of 1,25-OH2-D3. So, in the intestine, the um, 1,25-OH2-D3 is converted into Ca2 plus HPO4 and it's released um, as calcium in the blood. Similarly in the bone, it's um, you know calcium is released from the bone upon the action of PTH. Keep in mind that this diagram is just a brief overview about how calcium metabolism in your body works and just knowing some of the basics such as the forms of vitamin D3 um, knowing where the body releases calcium such as the intestine and the bone and how the kidney actually plays a key role in regulating calcium metabolism really will help you understand chronic renal failure as well as different types of hypercalcemia. So what are the causes of hypercalcemia? You can have hyperparathyroidism including ectopic hyperparathyroidism Patients can have humoral hypercalcemia of malignancy via parathyroid-related protein, and especially malignancy of the lung, kidney, ovary, head, and neck, and the esophagus. There can be renal failure. There can be malignancy via direct bone destruction, such as myeloma, lymphoma, and metastatic disease. Also, thiazide diuretics can cause hypercalcemia. Keep in mind that the uncommon causes of hypercalcemia include lithium use, vitamin D toxicity, hyperthyroidism, milk alkali syndrome, and familial hypocalciuric hypocalcemia. So all these are some of the key causes of hypercalcemia that you should keep in mind, especially the common causes are more important for the board exam. Um, so let's review your algorithm in managing a patient with hypercalcemia. You diagnose a patient who has serum elevated calcium levels. Well, what, what's your first toy step? First step is you would want to recheck the calcium levels and if they're normal then again understand that you know it may have been a transient elevation in the calcium level. If they're elevated you want to look for several things. You know you want to check the urine calcium level. Is this decreased? Then you well in that case you're thinking of familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. Um, is the patient on a lithium or thiazide medication? Well, if so, then you won't want to stop the medication. Um, does the patient, um, you know, have any other chemistry that suggests hyperparathyroidism? For example, the calcium elevated, but it's less than 14.5 milligrams. Chloride greater than 102. Um, lower decreased phosphate. Chloride and phosphate ratio greater than 33 and mild acidosis. All these can suggest hyperparathyroidism. If that's the case, then the parathyroid hormone is uh, working in ex is elevated, and so you may diagnose the patient with primary hyperparathyroidism. If not, then you would want to consider checking several things now. You'd want to check 1,25 OH to D3 levels and parathyroid hormone related peptide okay and keep in mind that if there's high 1 comma 25 OH2 D3 and low parathyroid like peptide then it's probably a granulomatous disease 
um, if it's again if the if there's a low value of one comma twenty five OH two D three and a high parathyroid hormone related peptide level, then you're thinking of some humoral hypercalcemia of malignancy going on. And so it's important to know the steps here as you evaluate a patient. Again, if you also rule out the elevated levels of 1,25 OH2 D3 and parathyroid hormone related peptide, then you want to get a uh, protein electrophoresis as well as a TSH level and a sedimentation rate as your last resort. Keep this algorithm in mind as you approach the board exam. What is the treatment of hypercalcemia? Well, first, fluids, um, and then Lasix once the patient is euvolemic. So understand the sequence of treatment. You want to fluid overload the patient, and then you want to give Lasix. You want to search for causes, and also anti-resorptive therapies such as bisphosphonates, calcitonin, um, are also very useful. Steroids, if patients have hypercalcemia due to extra renal vitamin D production like sarcoid, lymphoma, or TB, the granulomatous diseases, are proven to be beneficial. Finally, what are the indications for a parathyroidectomy? Well, a serum calcium level greater than 1.0, above the upper limit of normal, um, hypercalcemia, and hypercalciuria, so urinary calcium excretion of greater than 400 milligrams per day, a creatinine clearance less than 30% of age match controls, and a bone mineral density T-score of less than 2.5, as well as patients who are less than 50 years old and patients in whom periodic follow-up will be difficult. So keep this in mind as you approach the exam. And please visit complexflashcards.com for additional lectures as well as daily blog posts that will help you manage your strategy as you're approaching the board exam and taking your shelf exam. Good luck in your preparation and please visit complexflashcards.com for complete complex prep resources. Good luck.